I built this shed about two years ago and now I've got a problem with the door that I'm going to have to fix. I should have done it a long time ago. I was planning on doing it over this summer, but this summer has been the wettest summer on record and it's been raining like every other day and I haven't been able to do it. Well now I have a week of dry weather, but it's cold. <laughs> it's, it's late October, but I got to get this done before winter. Tiny House Prepper. Hey everybody, I'm Bill with Tiny House Prepper. And like I said, I got a problem with this door. Not long after I finished the construction of the shed, I started to notice that when it rains, I had a little bit of water and moisture coming in along the bottom of the door. Now, I don't know what happened. I know how to build, I know how to put in doors. I can't imagine that I would have put this door in and forgotten to put the caulk in underneath but I suspect that's what happened. I've been wanting to get to this. This was going to be one of my summer projects, but my, this summer has been crazy busy. We were either traveling to California <laughs> or something else, or it has been raining forever, and you can't fix caulk if it's going to rain. So now this is late October, and finally we have a week of dry weather, and so I hope to get this done, but now it's going down below freezing every night which is not good for caulk either. So it's not a good situation, but I got to get this done before the winter weather closes in. So let me show you what I'm talking about with this door. See that? Not only is it wet and moisture, but it's starting to turn the wood different colors and starting to rot, starting to get some mold in there. I think the wood is still salvageable, hasn't really rotted yet. We'll see once I get the door out. But that's just not a good situation. It's been going like that for two years. I got I can't let it go over another winter. I gotta fix this. Now this in this door is installed with galvanized screws and galvanized finishing nails. And I really hate taking doors out and then especially putting them back in. I just hate that, but it's got to be done. So first thing I'm going to do is take out the screws with the drill, and then I'll have to cut the nails out with a uh, with a sawzall. When I installed this, I took out one of the screws the factory installed screws through the hinge I took it because it's short I take it out and then I replace it with a long three inch galvanized screw so that the hinge is actually right into the stud behind it and that's what makes it secure So go around and cut out all the nails that go in this way from behind. Now I've also got nails that go in this way. I really hate taking out a door when you have to reuse it because you have to be really careful not to mess it up. Getting those out are going to be a pain because if I try to use a, you know, a claw to pull them out from the front, it messes the face all up. So I'm just going to have to try to sort of hammer it on this and hopefully the door will move out and pull the nail through. I don't know what else to do, but that's my plan. starting to move and the nail head right here, finishing nail, is being pulled through the wood. That's good. It's not messing up the surface. I can just talk that little hole when I reinstall it.
fuck the what? Another nail right here. Well, here's where the door was sitting, and it appears that I did put caulk in there. This is all wet. See, there's caulk all the way through there. And this is the bottom of the door itself, and there's definitely caulk there. So I just am baffled as to why it was leaking. See I got the flashing here it bends down and goes <coughs> down behind the the decking so there's no way any moisture can get in there so I guess all I can do is just clean it up and re it with more caulk. I'll put a lot of extra caulk on the corners I just don't know why it was leaking like that. This is crazy. The thing of it is, this is all wet. And the bottom of the door over there is all wet. So I'm going to have to let it dry out before I re it or the new caulk won't cure properly. And it's supposed to rain again tomorrow night. So I guess if this doesn't dry by tomorrow, I'm going to have to cover the opening with a tarp to try to protect it until this can dry out. Now all of this is wet. The wood is wet. Down here the wood is wet. I can't do anything with that while it's wet. I can't put caulk in. It'll never cure when it's wet like that. So I have this heater. It has a fan that blows. Blowing heat on here. And <clears throat> This is going to take a while to dry and the uh, doorway is open. It's supposed to rain tomorrow night. So for now I'll leave this open. I'll keep the heater blowing on it. Right now it's about 45 degrees or so Fahrenheit. Um, so that's not going to dry at 45 degrees very well but hopefully the heater will help. And if it doesn't dry out by tomorrow afternoon, then I'm going to have to try to somehow cover this door with a tarp to keep the rain from getting it all soaked. And I can't, I just can't do anything until it's dry. So now I've brought the door inside and set it up. And this is the bottom of the door. You can see the caulk that was here. I started scraping the bottom and I forgot to turn the camera on. Sorry about that. Just scraping the caulk off so that this wood can dry. See, this is all wet as well. I've got to get all of that dry before I can re caulk it. So I had two days left uh, before the rain came, and hopefully this was going to dry out. But even though I kept that little heater on, it didn't quite dry out enough because uh, I also had to have time for the caulk to dry before the rain came. So I wasn't able to get it done before the rain. So I put this tarp in here 
nailed it all up, tucked it underneath the siding on the edges, and I've now had four days of rain. But I just checked this and it looks like it's still dry. I didn't get any more moisture in there from the rain and that's good. And now I think it's actually dry enough that I'm going to be able to go ahead and continue with the project and get the door installed today. So I'm excited to finally get this project done. Now that it's no longer summer and the highs are in the mid 40s, it takes a lot longer for caulk to dry. Normally it takes like 12 hours anyway, so it would take an awful lot longer than that. Normally a tube of caulk costs maybe two or three dollars. I paid almost seven dollars a, a, a tube for this uh, Gorilla caulk because it's supposed to dry in 30 minutes. Now it dries in 30 minutes at 70 degrees. At 40 degrees it's still going to take a lot longer, but it's not going to take the days to dry that, the, that normal caulk would. So I'm going to go ahead and use this and hopefully that 30 minutes, you know, at 40 degrees or 45 degrees, what it is now, hopefully it'll dry in a couple hours anyway. So I can get it dried before the next rain comes in a couple of days. I got the tarp off and this looks all nice and dry now. Like I said, I've had that little heater blowing on here for a few days. This is still stained from the wood, from the, from the water, but it's dry. I wasn't too concerned about this anyway because this is where the caulk goes. The thing I was concerned about was the end here. This was quite wet. It's all very dry now. Same with the other end. You can see the water stains, but it's all dry now. And this is the bottom of the door. Once again, there's water stains there, but it's all dry now. I've had that, like I said, I've had that heater blowing on this for a long time. I think I'm good to go to put in the new caulk and reinstall the door. So now I'm preparing to reinstall the door. This is a 16 penny galvanized finishing nail that went through here and this was one of the nails that secured it in place before. We've got quite a few of them along here and I got to get rid of that. I could just use a hammer and hit here and it would come out this way, but it would mess up this. This has been caulked and painted over. I don't want to mess up that finish. So instead, I'm going to use my Sawzall with a metal cutting blade. Just like that. Now I can reinstall it without messing up the front. So I'm ready to start reinstalling the door. I've scraped off all the old caulk as best I could. Some of this is on there really tight and if I, I was using a putty knife but I'm afraid of puncturing a hole in the flashing so I don't want to scrape too hard but I got all the loose stuff off and this is really stuck on there tight. Something that I'm thinking is that maybe when I did the caulking I put caulk all along here Maybe I didn't put enough caulk here on the edges and maybe the rain was coming in here because there's a gap, you know, between the edge of the door and the, uh, the stud there. So I'm going to put caulk in here. I'm also going to put a bunch of caulk in here to try to fill in that gap as well. Also up here at the top, I'm going to put a row, a bead of caulk all along here so that when I press the door in, it'll seal between the top of the door and this uh, part of the siding here. Hopefully that'll keep rain from going down inside of there. Now if it was summer and it was warm and I have this caulk that cures in 30 minutes, I would have to work really fast here once I start putting the caulk on to get the door completely set within 30 minutes before the caulk would start to set. That would be a lot of pressure. Fortunately, because it's not so hot, this is going to take a little longer to cure. That gives me a little bit of extra time. I don't have as much time pressure on me.
Now when I close the door from the inside, I have to make sure that it's all square. And I see that there's a bigger gap here than there is here, and I got some light coming here. So I got to make it square. I got to take the top and push it this way a little bit, and that'll close this gap up a little. I do that by using shims. Uh, this is very thin at one end and it tapers to a wide there. And you just put the shim right in here. And that actually moves the top over. I have to do the shims all the way around, get the right amount to fill in the gap, and then I put nails or screws in this way from the inside. So I'll open this up, I'll put the shims in, and then I put nails or screws in this way. And then more nails in from the outside. This top hinge right here is actually the most important point because that holds the biggest part of the weight of the door as it swings open. So I use the shims and I actually put a, I put the fat end here and the thin end here and I put them together like that and then I can make it thicker by sliding them like that. So I put the fat end in on that one and the skinny end in on this one. <clears throat> Looks like I need another skinny end here. Make sure it's completely tight. Then I can cut these off later. If you got a lot of spare wood laying around, scraps of 2x4 and things like that, you can make your own shims. Just uh, cut it up into tapered pieces. Or, if you're lazy like me, <laughs> you can buy a shim pack. This is a contractor shim pack. You get it at Lowe's or whatever. It's got a whole bunch of them in here. You see they're all tapered opposite ways like that. Makes it so much easier. So now, from the inside, I have the shims in behind where the hinge is so that it's tight against the uh, stud. And then I take one of those screws out, that's actually already out, that holds the, uh, the hinge on and then I use a longer screw and put it in there. The rest of these are very short. I use a longer screw. And that actually screws the uh, hinge right to the stud so it's nice and strong. Now this is the other side of the door away from the hinge. This is the door latch. And after making, closing the door and putting the shims in to make sure that the gap is right between this and the door, I've got this all set. So now if I was really gung-ho I could take out these two short screws and put in long ones. That would really lock it in place, but I'm going to use galvanized 16 penny finishing nails. And I got one of these already in here from, from the outside. One in there that hides underneath of the weather strip can't even see it and I'm going to put another one right here because there's a lot of stress right here so I want to make sure there are several
Merrill. This is just a shed, so I'll probably never do this, but on a house I could countersink that a little bit and put a little bit of uh, caulk or putty in there and then paint over it and you'd never see that. Since it's a shed, I'll probably never get around to that. <laughs> then after I have all that done, I just use a knife and cut these off. Alright, I got the door reinstalled. It's a nice tight fit. I got shims all the way around and nails and screws all the way around. I'm happy with that. So now the only other thing is going to be to see how it performs after it rains and whether it keeps the rain out now. Here's hoping. Okay, so we finally had some rain again. It rained most of the night last night and I came out here this morning and checked it and everything was all dry inside. So it seems like I have fixed the problem. I'm very happy. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please like it down below and thanks for coming along and subscribe so you can see other great videos like this that I do for, you know, projects. It seems like there's always projects around the house. <coughs> so thanks for being here. You be blessed. Have a great day.